Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to everybody around the world. Welcome back to the One Piece video featuring your boy, Don Quixote do Flamingo. Today, we're diving into another birdcage list here on the channel in OPO8. Get ready for it. It's going to be a lot of fun, especially considering I'm looking forward to this one. We haven't touched in on Doflamingo birdcage lists since OP07, in which we didn't really gain access to a bunch of new cards outside of EB with Ragnarok and OP07 with Noronor Beam Sword. Dofi wasn't really doing all too much in OP07 as well, so we didn't really get a lot of new stuff that's going to utilize that he can utilize and change this deck out to the way we want. But in OP08, we gained a bunch of new stuff that he can use that's not indirectly for Dofi, but it does buff the list. And we're going to get into that real quick. Well, I want to talk about this list here. What I got cooking up. I have two lists to go over today. And we're going to play a bunch of games as we normally do. I'm going to try my best. All right. Now, let's get over the 2K counters first before we dive into the rest of this list. Because there are people out there that question why I'm using Viola or Baby 5. Why you're using this versus other 2Ks, etc, etc. And I want to go over it just real fast before we dive into the games today. So... Some of the 2Ks that get mentioned are going to be X-Drake quite often. X-Drake is another 2K counter in which you can Don minus one and rip a card from your opponent's hand. Sounds great. It's expensive. It's not searchable. Therefore, I'm not going to utilize it. Doesn't make sense. He does have a pretty strong on-play effect here for the list. Allows you to extend the cage a little bit. But realistically, I'm not dropping five Don to play an X-Drake over a Diamante or Queen or any other blocker that's relevant here in this list. It's not going to happen. The other one that comes to mind is going to be Khalifa. This is a solid card, has a really good effect. This odds are the effect is not going to be able to get off in a game. Most of the time, it'll just pop this immediately. It's not going to survive. But if it does, it has a queen ability when she attacks. You don minus one, draw two, trash one, which is pretty solid. Allows you to cycle out dead cards in hand and go about your day. These are the two 2k counters I wanted to talk about before telling you that we are going to be running Viola and Baby 5 over any other 2k that you can come up with here in this list. Now, one of the main reasons as to why is because these are searchable with Baby 5. Consistency is key here in this deck. Generally speaking, you're playing down Baby 5, you're drawing into the birdcage. If not, you're taking a 2k, an event, or something that's relevant in that current game state like a Sugar or Diamante. But, i.e. being able to just get into the 2k counter off the search is better than seeing x drakes x drakes and khalifas right can't do anything with those now with that being said we have two spicy lists that i want to go over with today one is going to utilize electrical luna or try to i've been playing around with this card quite often you, you guys know this man i i have like i don't know how many birdcage lists and at the end of the day this is my favorite leader in the in the game in the anime i'm gonna be playing the characters that I enjoy. So I'm going to try to be playing around with lists that I can showcase, I can utilize, I can let you guys know, hey, this is good, or hey, this works for me. Because a lot of people like this leader, a lot of people like the combination of Birdcage, so why not? But when it comes to Dofi, Electrical Luna isn't as good in theory, on paper, in practice, as you would think it is. Just due to the fact that we run Birdcage. Birdcage locks down all five costs and under. Electrical Luna will only work if your opponent's characters are rested. So, hypothetically, in a lot of scenarios, this is not going to get you the value you want it to. So, going up against some of the top tier meta decks like Black Yellow Luffy, Sabos aren't really going to be rested, right? It's just not going to happen. They're not going to be rested. You're not going to be able to freeze them with Electrical Luna most of the time. And when you are, Birdcage is already locking them down for you, right? Come on. So, other lists like um, Red Green Law will be coming back into OP08 format. This sounds great. Birdcage sounds great. It's just not relevant. It's not good in that matchup either because Law can just bounce his characters in and out of the freezes. See what I'm saying? And it's the same scenario with um, the Sabo. When we're talking about the red yellow Sabo here, he's able to just kick them back to the top of his life. Therefore, they're not going to be locked down with Birdcage or Electrical Luna. So there are certain deck lists out there that we will see a lot more of in OP08, in which Luna is really not going to 
do all too much for you. Now, I do think this card is really good. It does have a trigger, just like Punk Gibson. Allows you to rest any character on board, which is awesome. But I think it's more suited for decks like, you know, Yamato or decks suited like Carrot. Things that can utilize the Minks a little bit better. Let's go over some of the Mink cards here that you guys might consider in Doflamingo. Which, I don't blame you. That would be something like Carrot. A very good card here. Pretty strong in decks like Yamato as well. Allows us just to control the board a little bit. On play, it allows you to freeze up to one of your opponent's 7 cost or less characters. And they can't become active, so you know, they get the freeze. And when she attacks, she gets the freeze. The cool thing about this is I want to utilize this card in Dofi. The downside to it is, for me to be able to do that, I need to play around with other cards that restand this. So cards such as, I'm not going to butcher this, playing this with Carrot is pretty strong because it allows you to play Carrot down, free something, or if she's already on board, you attack with it, drop this down, restand it, and then Carrot can free something again, which is really nice, right? But the downside to it is, you'd want to run four of these, you, you would want to run four of these. It kind of hurts the list when it comes to ratios and other cards, and I don't think this is for Dofi. You know what I mean? It's not going to be a Dofi thing. I think it's going to be more so of a carrot thing. But it is something to consider here when you guys are playing around with different lists for Doflamingo here. A couple other cards that can be included, I wouldn't recommend it, is going to be things like Nekomomushi. Nekomomushi allows you to have seven or more rested cards. This character will gain rush. That's about it. Just something else that can be included with the five drop that has rush. Can get damage in real quick. That's about it. Everything else here is going to be a little bit irrelevant, considering we are not a mink leader. So do be mindful of that. The other cards we're going to be utilizing here in Doflamingo are going to be Ragnarok, Nor Noro Beam Sword. And you may have noticed we are not running with Punk Gibson. Why is that? Normally, in all of my lists, I have at least two to four copies of this card in there. I decided to take it out to make space for other things, especially for like Luna here, just, just for this particular build. But Punk Gibson, normally it's valuable. If your opponent attacks you, you can drop this and become 9k rest of 4 costs on board. I just see a lot of Bonnies going out to different locals. I see a lot of you know Rob Lucci's and all that sort of thing. I'm only going to be able to rest things like Rob Lucci 4 drop or a Blocker Borsellino, which is great, right? Cool. But when you're playing up against decks like Jewelry Bonnie, which you guys are going to see every single local event you guys go to, unfortunately, there's a lot of cards here where Punk Gibson can't touch. Cavendish, Jewelry Bonnie, uh, Basil Hawkins, and I feel like Punk Gibson has not necessarily been power crept, but is being power crept. It's a great card. I love it here in this list, and I will still always use it. It's just something that I consider nowadays where I don't get as much value out of that card as I once did. It's a fantastic card, and I would highly advise you to keep using it here in Doflamingo, especially if you guys can make room for it in your lists. Just be mindful, it's not as good as it once was back in the day. But, speaking of newer cards, Noro Noro Beam Sword came out in EBO, not sorry, EBO 1, but OPO 7 in which I advise you guys to play two to four copies in each and every birdcage list you come up with with Dofi. This is a very, very strong card if you can utilize it with Sugar. If you have a Sugar on board, they decide to play something down, you can rest one of their bigger bodies that's already on board. If they attack into you, you can rest another character on board with Nor Noro Beam Sword here, which is really strong. This can rest anything, and we're talking about like 10 drop Dofi, Big Mom, Kaido, whatever. This can rest whatever you want to when they attack into you, which is really strong here. The other card that you guys might not normally see is Uta. I played around with a bunch of lists here with Uta, and y'all know, I play a lot of Dofi here. I think it was back when I was playing around with Bullet for a little bit. I utilized Uta quite a bit. I think Uta in OPO8 is pretty strong. There are just certain matchups where often not she gets rested or kill before her effect can go off. But there are certain matchups where, like Black Hail Luffy for instance, they can't deal with this. Once this is slapped on board, if Luffy decides to attack into you by any means necessary, you can just rest one of their Sabos, and then that Sabo is locked down with Birdcage. It's pretty good. But, 
if you're not playing up against a bunch of black yellow luffy players at your locals and you see more Nell players and more yellow players more puddings or what have you uta can kind of feel less valuable there because this is this isn't going to rest like 10 cost big mom you know what i mean this isn't going to rest like katakuris this isn't going to rest 10 drop aces so in those matchups particularly you can get rid of this right and you can go into law Law will always have a very, very useful ability in today's metagame. Even if your opponent doesn't have seven cards in hand, you can always activate the on play Don minus one to just extend the birdcage. But most of the time, you're ripping cards out of your opponent's hand, and he has a use. Whereas Utha has to block to get the Don minus one to rest the five ca cost character on board. But, you know, pick and choose. The other upside to this card is into the Bonnie matchup, like a Supernova, you know? you're able to rest Cavendish. So this forces your opponent to have to attack with Cavendish first. And then if you block with Utha, you can rest something like Uroge or Jewelry Bonnie that's on board or what have you. She does serve a purpose, but eats the run. Now, let's get into the meat and the potatoes here. We are gonna be running with Eustace Kid and Electrical Luna in this particular list. I'm gonna show you guys two different variations of Doflamigo today. And the second variation does not utilize Luna or Kid. But let's go ahead and show you what else we're cooking up. We're go we are going to be playing with Charlotte Big Mom. This is a card in which really helps this deck out a lot more than you might think first glance. Being able to heal yourself, remove a six cost or less character on board is really, really strong here. Just due to the fact that Birdcage normally can't touch six cost characters, being able to just pop or sorry, remove a six cost character on board is really, really good here. Also, she helps you sustain yourself into the late game. So being able to chain Big Mom after Big Mom into like something like a Doflamingo is detrimental for a lot of decks to deal with here. But I do think she's gonna be really, really good in this list, particularly because of the heal, and she has you able to extend Birdcage with the Dawn Minus ability. Queen is gonna be a no-brainer. Queen went down in value when it comes to like price wise, so this is a little bit more affordable. Queen allows you to draw two, trash one, and always have the option to extend Birdcage when he's played on board by Don Monising. The other upside to this character, like Diamante, if you attach one Don to Diamante, he's swinging in for seven, and then at the end of the turn, you can restand the blocker. If you guys have Queen or Diamante on board, they become a 10k blocker, which can be restood with Spiderweb and block again for the turn, which is really strong. Now, the other thing here is Mr. Two Bond Clay. This is something that we don't see. And I figured, why can't I try this in Birdcage Del Flamingo and get value with it? But you know, it's a ramp up early into your big moms. Technically, it can allow you to have a really big body on board, control board a little bit, and heal up. That way, you're able to sustain yourself until you're able to find a bunch of your blockers or chain at the Del Flamingos. It's pretty strong. The other upside to this is in matchups like Black Yellow Luffy and Pudding, they don't have a lot of ways to deal with this. So being able to swing in on your opponent is quite strong, isn't it? Especially if they have like um, Luffy on board, which, let me find him real quick, my bad, I'm sorry about that. If they have Luffy on board and this is an 8K, Bon Clay can steal the power, swing in for nine, or depending on how much Dawn you attach to this man and attack face. If you're using this into a Pudding matchup, we're stealing Big Mom's power, right? So we're swinging in for 12K, which is huge. And again, they don't have ways to remove this. So it, it does allow us to hit the opponent a lot easier than we could before, right? We go ahead and dive into one more list when it comes to uh, Birdcage Del Flamingo here. And we're gonna play a bunch of games today. This is version two. In version two, the deck changes a little bit. We go up on Noronoa Beam Sword. We drop the Electrical Luna. Right, so this maxes out for Sword. Sword is gonna be ideal. I would highly advise you guys to play around with two to four copies in each list. Very strong card, allowing you to rest any character on board. And we are slapping in Zoro as well. We drop the Kid for the Zoro. The Kid is kind of irrelevant now, especially when we have access to Big Mom and Queen still. These both allow you to just extend Birdcage indefinitely most of the time. But the Zoro will take the place of Kid in most of these matchups because Zoro is very strong into decks like Jewelry Bonnie, Black Hill Luffy, and Enel if he can somehow survive without getting hit by Ragnarok. But either way, 
Let's dive into a bunch of games today. See you guys in a split second. Let's go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We're going to dive into a bunch of games today. Coming at you guys with Birdcage, Doflamingo, playing into Carrot, in which this should be an interesting matchup. She's able to rest some of my characters on board if she has Minx and attack into them. So things like Sugar, I have to watch out for it because she can just rest it and then attack into it with lead. So, I have to be a little bit mindful of here on how we use Sugar in this matchup. And speaking of which, she will be ideal in every green deck in today's metagame, considering what Sugar allows you guys uh, to do. So in matchups like Jewelry Bonnie, you are going to be wanting to find Sugars and Birdcage, let alone um, Charlotte Linlin, to be able to win those games or help you survive late enough to win those games. The Sugar helps you guys rest the Zoro and the Hody Jones. So do be mindful of that. And in the Nell matchups, Sugar helps you guys survive against 10 cost Ace because you can rest it once it hits the board. So just something to consider. Sugar is a very valuable card now going into OPO8. Always has been, always will be. Her effect is always going to be in play no matter what. So make sure you guys are paying attention and utilizing her properly in these matchups. In any case, let's dive back into this list here, or this match here, and see what we can do. Inurashi already, huh? Interesting. I don't know. I don't know why they decided to hard cast this when I don't have any bodies on board, so they can't really freeze anything. They just get a body on board for free, I guess. But still, Bond Clay, not not bad here. We could ramp up. I think ramping up is probably the better play. This allows us to go to nine Don, or sorry, ten Don, the following turn. So now we have access to Linlin Lin and Doflamingo already, which is pretty good. Get down Sugar. Again, she can rest Sugar if she chooses to, which is okay in this scenario. But we'll see if she decides to do that. Oof. I'll take the 2k counter. There goes all the Electrical Lunas, so we're not getting value with that. It's unfortunate. Let's go 5 here. I played a lot of games with Luna. There were some matchups where it was really clutch, you know what I mean? And there were other matchups where I just see it in the searches, and they just go straight to the bottom of the deck. And I think that's one of the problems here with the list. The more I run of the card, the less I see of it, unless it's in my opening hand or my mulligan. Most of the time, I'm just bottom decking it with baby five. We'll go ahead and do the thing. Because we knew that she was going to rest this, and we had the counter for it. Now she can't play anything on board without, you know, the threat of Sugar resting the card. And in this scenario, hmm, let's rest this. Because she wants to attack with the Inurasha, that's totally okay. It'll get locked down with Cage. Go ahead, clear it. No? Okay. Fair. Alright, we're at 10. Let's drop a Linlin -Lin here. Minus a Dawn. And we can discard one Diamante with Heal of Life. And we'll remove this guy. Put this on the bottom here. Which is fine. Now we can go... Actually, let's attack with Bonclay. Bonclay will act as a pseudo-blocker next turn. I know he's not going to get a lot of value here. But we can copy Rosinante's power and attack into him just to get cards out of hand. I don't really want to go for life just yet. And give Carrot a lot of cards. Come on, give me the 2k. Yeah, I know you got it. Oh, with zero cost event. That's uh, that's good news for me. Alright, we'll give her one. Next turn, we can do the exact same thing by playing Lin Lin and then removing the Inurasha on board. Or not Inurasha, but Nekomomushi. And then go to 5 life. At that point, we'll be healthy enough to just take hits for a little bit until we find our Queens and Diamantes and Spiderwebs. Yeah, sure, no problem. You got it. Not sure why she decided to attack. Okay, that's fair. That makes sense. Well, it begins. I mean, we got another sugar, so that's good. Uh, let's keep Birdcage down here, just for the time being. We'll minus the Dawn, we'll heal up again. We'll get rid of Diamante. We'll gain a life. And we'll put this on bottom of life here for the time being. This will remove Minx from the board. So now she has to play down another Minx to be able to arrest any of my characters that are 5 costs or less. Which we don't have any right now. But 
It's something that she has to work around if she wants to go resting anything. Basically, we're trying to play around Doflamingos. I don't want my Lilins to both get locked down. Because that'll just cost me the game. And that's why we didn't attack with uh, Lin Lin last turn here. We could have, but you never know. She might have another Dofi. Yeah, sure, you have it. There's a queen. Now we're in business. So queen will keep birdcage up. She's an arrest leader again. That's a poor use of Dofi, I think, but... It's the round. We can get down queen. Again, she won't be able to rest my sugar here. Um, I'll get rid of Spiderweb. I know it's crazy. Yeah, we'll get rid of one Spiderweb. It's fine. We'll keep the 2k. Alright, and then we'll play down Sugar. This way, if she wants to rest me, she has to play a Mink first before she can rest the Sugar. And if she plays a Mink down, we can just rest the Doflamingo. So we'll go 12k here. She gave me a zero cost event last time, so I'm thinking she doesn't have the counter for this. If she does, she needs 6k. That might be the whole hand. Yep. There you go. I don't know why I said 6k. Right? It's 5k counter, yeah, yeah. Math. Alright, two cards left. Hmm. We have a Dofi for next turn. She decides to attack into me this time around. Cool. It's totally fine. We get a queen. We need to protect the Linlin here. And I'm going to have to use a spiderweb to restand Linlin. That way we're out of range of Doflamingo. Because if she's attacking first, this just leads me to believe she has another Dofi. Give her the 2k. It might be better just to block the queen here. And not use the event. And then when she attacks with Dofi here, we can use the event to restand. Beautiful. This way she can't rest me with Doflamingo if she has another one in hand. Or Zoro. Okay, cool. Alright, we're chilling, boys. We're chilling. We'll rest this. The Silly Goose. And then we'll play our own Doflamingo. And we got another one. Lovely. Alright, Birdcage is going to have to pop this turn, unfortunately, but... It's okay, we should be able to clear at least some of this board. We'll go nine in the face here. And, uh... Sorry, Sugar. So that's three Dofies we've seen of hers so far. What are the odds she has the fourth one in hand? Please no. She does. Yo. <laughs> Why? I mean... We have to do this then hopefully we can safely just remove one. There's no way. No counter? Okay, they had one. Fair. Alright, so now we have two attacks here. Which, in theory, she should be able to clear Del Flamingo on board at the very least. I mean, she's got 10 down to play with. And we don't have very much counter in hand, so... If she wants to clear Lin Lin and Dofi, I think she could. But I think maybe our two floating Dawn with our leader ability is probably throwing her off a little bit, which is nice, so... You got it. She's got 6 Dawn left. She can go 11. What does she play for three? Oh, okay, fair. We have the sugar for this, though, so I think we're chilling. We need to clear these Doflamingos. Let's get a blocker down first. I mean, that works. We get rid of the kid. We've got 5k counter in hand. With enough Dawn to be able to remove some of these, I think. This means she has no counter in hand. Boys, we're chilling. Let's go 11 just in case she has 1k. You never know. Well, uh, this was fun. Hmm. 
if she has Hody Jones, could she win the game here potentially? She'd slap down Hody, rip a life, rest Sugar and Queen, or she'd rest both of my Dawn. I'm not sure what she would rest in this scenario, but let's say she rests Sugar and Queen, or Queen and a Dawn, right? Sugar will rest the Hody Jones. She swings in with 8k with Carrot and 10k with, uh, what do you call it, um, Doflamingo. Okay. Never mind. I think if she did that, she, we still have enough counter for it, which is great. Ragnarok, definitely don't need it here. It slapped down another blocker. And now we start trickling life here. Because now we have hand advantage, board advantage. We're chilling, boys. This was a long one, but we definitely were able to pull it off. And I think this this is what happens to a lot of the green matchups with Birdcage Dofi, I think. And blue. And blue. Hopefully we can find some boas or doflamingos to run into, because they're not going to have a fun time. Um, Let's just go 9. And the 10 here should be guaranteed. I don't really have to attach the Dawn to it. Just in case our trigger here is an event, I'd rather just be able to have the Dawn readily available. Well, I guess we will have two Dawn up anyway, so... Wouldn't have mattered there. So here's a search with Wanda. No cards. Or Rust Dofi. Unfortunate for you. Well, good game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We're going to dive into another game coming at you guys with Dofi playing into another carrot, Rapid Fire. You know, at the end of the day, it is what it is. We're playing against another green deck. So, I mean, hopefully this one might be a little bit different for carrot overall. But I want to showcase a lot of newer leaders here in the format, opposed to playing into, like, older decks. So I think a lot of us know how certain matchups can go with decks like uh, Rob Lucci and stuff. He's able to just pop our big bodies on board. So it's a little bit harder for us to stick down, um, what do you call it, uh, Lin Lins and Doflamingos. But we have a much easier time now being able to sustain ourselves in that matchup. It is actually doable, opposed to like Sakazuki or Luchi with Stage. It's a lot better now that we have the Lin Lin. So let's go ahead and go 7 here. I just actually haven't really seen any Luchis today, which is great. I'm not complaining, but... I wouldn't mind. It looks like Carrot's actually going to utilize Zo, which is a very, very strong stage in this list, and I don't like dealing with it. It's very hard to keep her board locked down when she has Zo up, just because of it allows her to restand her Minx. So if Birdcage locks something down, she can just restand it at the end of the turn. Six here. I don't mind taking a couple hits early game. But if we're not able to sustain ourselves into the late game, we're probably going to have a hard time here. We got the cage. We got a 2k counter or Doflamingo here. We have one Dofi in hand. Let's take the 2k. We have to go 5 first. There's no way she blocks with Pedro. Yep, gives me a 2, which is nice. We'll drop cage and pass it up. We have no events here, which does suck. She may take the bait and try to run into the baby five. For some reason, people do that. I don't I don't understand, but they do. They think that we'll just restand baby five with spiderweb, and I don't really care about that search all too much. So if you guys want to clear it, by all means, go for it. Already frozen. Don't know if that was worth it for you. 8k lead. Yep. Ooh, we the beam sword. Hmm. Nah. You know what? In hindsight, I should have did that. I should have used it. Because we're at 6 Dawn, right? That would have ramped us up to 7. We went to 9 Dawn the following turn. Which gives us access to the Lin Lin. Yeah, that's my bad. That's my bad. We should have done that. Misplays were, misplays were made. Because if we played the Lin Lin down there, we could have got rid of the Pedro or Inurasha. Which I think was probably the better play. But it's all good. We can go 9k to face and then slap down an Utha and call it a day because we have beam sword in hand that we can just rest a character on board as well zero cost event and a 2k counter let's go boys now unfortunately 
the Uta probably isn't going to get a lot of value here in this matchup. She has Minx on board, so she can just rest me. Therefore, we're not going to get the Don Juan Isin effect. But she has to attack into it to kill it. So. And she only can restand one character, one Mink, at the end of the turn with Zoe. So. Let's go ahead and uh, remove a Don. Give this the boost. Or rest the Pedro. And I guess it's okay, because it's better than me giving two, K two 2k counters, so they can have the Uta here. There's no way she's going to gain any value here in this match if she has Minx on board. And if she was a Law, we wouldn't have been able to get value there either, other than the Dawn Minus effect. I'd imagine she restands Pedro, but we'll see. Seven here to lead... Yep, fair. Alright, let's start healing up. Sustain ourselves here and at least get Birdcage to do some things. Let's go 5 face. Okay. We need to keep Cage on board because she has to play around it here. Trash Cage, heal life. Mm, we could get rid of Pedro first. Or the Carrot though. Maybe the carrot is more valuable here. This card is so good in this deck. Pedro's a blocker. His his on KO effect isn't really valuable here to me. Let's get rid of this. Because that would suck if next turn we play like a queen or a diamante and she freezes it. She can rest it with her leader ability then attack with carrot to freeze it. Which would be terrible. Five. We'll give you a two. Okay. Rosanante and Inurasha. Or Nekomamushi. I don't know why I keep calling him that. Probably 9k, right? Sure. Our Mr. 2. Who do you restand? Oh, I guess she restand Cat Viper, right? Yep. Let's play down another Linlin. Let's do it again. Keep Birdcage on board. We'll toss Dofi, because we already have one. Mr. 2 is a, like a 1k counter by this point. get rid of the blocker and start trying to clear board which might be a little bit better here let's go six into this because she can just restand this next turn okay go nine into Rosanante here nice so that means she has no counter in hand which is great unless she just drew into one but so that's what she had in hand beforehand which is Do Flamingo. I'd assume. Unfortunately, though, now we're frozen. Give you the 2k. Um, queen. We did get a queen, which is good. We'll keep the birdcage on board. Our hand's looking really, really good right now. Because now we have two blockers. Which, I don't need to drop both here at this time. I think it'd be a mistake if I play this queen down. Because she can rest one. And then he's stuck there. Diamante can at least restand himself at the end of the turn. So, if she wants to rest it, I can attach it on and restand him. Let's go nine to face. Now, hopefully, she doesn't have another Dofi. That Zoe is really helping out, especially against my birdcage right now. Really does suck. Hope you whiff. Ah, cool, sweet. She did whiff. That's what you get. We gotta clear three more minks. Somehow, some way. That's a problem. Rosie's pretty good here. Hmm. What are you doing? Alright. Rest that leader ability, sure. Seven to lead, I assume? Okay. That's fine. Hey, it, now, this card right here, I'm trying to tell you guys, is so good. Because now we can activate it and just rest the Dofi and call it a day. That feel when she decided to stack all of her Dawn on her characters? Awesome. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. Let's go ahead and beam sword. 
this will extend Birdcage a little bit. Actually, it won't because we go up to 10 dot anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But we can tell him no. Because I'd imagine she was going to run that 13k into probably a Lin Lin or a blocker on board. Counter out for this one. And now she can't hit me with that. She was restood the Nekamamushi. We got the Spiderweb and the Queen. Let's start clearing. We know she doesn't have counter, so... She has to give me the, um... Oh, she did have a 2k. Okay. Fair. I gotta be careful on what we do here. Because I need enough Dawn to be able to restand Diamante and attack into the Doflamingo at least one more time. I think we have to go 10k into him. Cool. We have 8 here. I'm not really worried about Queen going anywhere. It's if I don't play down another Queen this turn, our Queen will pop. And I don't want that to happen. So, as much as I want to clear the Dofi, it's probably safe for me not to do that. Because we have the spider web and we have the 2k counters to protect out of the hit. And we have to play Queen here to make sure Birdcage doesn't take away our Diamantes. Or sorry, our Queen at the end of the turn. You know what? That's worth it. It's pretty good. That's pretty good. I can't really slap down sugar here as much as I'd want to, but it's okay. Now we have enough spider webs to restand queens and diamante blockers. I think we're chilling. Nice. Well played. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. We got another spider web here in life as well. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We're going to dive into another game. Coming at you guys with Doflamingo. Playing into Doflamingo. Except for this time around, we are playing the superior Dofi. Birdcage into blue Dofi, in which he's not going to have fun. Like 100%, this man's going to hate his life in this matchup, and it is what it is. It's interesting that some of these decks, right... Even though they're not tier 1, tier 0, or tier 2, for example, just bodies some of the top tier meta decks in the format. Like Dofi here, we have a great time into Boa, we have a great time into Blue Dofi, Carrot, Bonnie. We have a great time. Birdcage keeps characters locked down outside of the, the Basil Hawkins, you know what I mean? We take care of everything else in that regard. But we lose against so many other decks in the format, you know? Like, Pudding, I think Pudding would pretty much just run me over. There's just nothing else I really could do about it. I think Pudding would probably run me over. I haven't really tested this brand new list into it, but I think Pudding is probably a stronger matchup for me, you know? Um, decks like Nell, I think we have a much better time going into that with the Big Moms now than we did before. Unfortunately, I have not seen any Nels today. And, nor Rob Lucci's, but I think we can have an okay matchup into that. It's not as bad as the Sokka matchup from back then, but... And Lucci lost stage, so Moms can kind of survive a little bit. But these blue matchups, man, I feel like we just run them over. Because Dofi just summons bodies on board that are already rested, such as this. And our birdcage says no. And, uh, yeah, it's great. It's a 10 out of 10 moment. It feels good. The boy's got three cards in hand already. I get we have no board. I understand that. But the cool thing about this is we have Sugar, which rests everything he wants to put on board. Because it has to be four costs or under with his uh, leader ability. Actually, we can take another Sugar here, but let's, get, let's take the Sugar just in case. We can play one at a time. We'll go five here. I don't really care about the bodies that are already rested. I'm trying to get the bow at the block here. It would be great. Okay, he takes it. That's fine. We can play down Sugar and Uta. Because he goes to... 4, 5, 6... He goes to 8 Dawn next turn. If he wants to do Dofi Leader ability and Gravity Blade, he can't. So he'd have to choose A or B. If he decides to do Gravity Blade, he has no Dawn to attach to his characters. Which is awesome. 
Unfortunately, we don't have events in our hand to uh, protect ourselves, so. Less awesome, right? But still, it'll be alright. If he doesn't have removal for, U for Utha, we get the Dawn minus effect for the birdcage, and we can rest another character on his field. So he can't play anything down either, by the way. Because if he plays something, Sugar says no. Okay, so no Gravity Blade. We're chilling. 9k to face. We can do this. I don't mind letting her go here. It's totally okay with me. Now everything is locked down. Dofi can get in 9k. And I can't really guard out. But... Remember those days where I had to click my Dawn individually? Yeah, it was crazy. There's a Perona on top. We get a Lin Lin. So this will help us sustain ourselves for the rest of the game. Hey, another Lin Lin. Let's go, boys. We're chilling. Hmm. I guess we just go face here, right? Because I can just go 9 to face and then drop down another Uta. Do you have the counter? You do not. Cool. Let's drop down another one of these. We'll pass up the turn. Next turn, we potentially can play down Lin Lin and see where it takes us. So we'll be at 10 Dawn and we'll have to play either Lin Lin or Queen to keep the birdcage alive. You could argue that we could pop the birdcage. If we pop the birdcage and he drops a Moria down, Moria can pull back any of the cards in trash. You know what I mean? Just giving him access to more cards, you know? If he wants the Moria to get back to Jinbei, the Jinbei can play something else down from hand, and that's three bodies back on board that won't get um, locked down. Sugar can rest one of them, which is great, but still. So that's four Dawn for what? Okay. Oh, so he's playing with the structure deck stuff. I did not notice that, actually. That sucks. That law card is really, really good, man. He definitely should put sugar in hand. But, yeah, that law effect is really strong. Because it allows him to kick back, like, Dofi to hand or Perona to hand and play it down later. Why did he do that? Unless he has another law in hand to bounce back that law, maybe? And he goes 10k to me. That's crazy. Sure. You may be thinking it's looking dire, but I think we got this. Let's do the thing. Minus the Dawn. We need to heal ourselves by discarding the card. We can get rid of the Birdcage. But, hmm. Yeah, the Birdcage is a better option. We need the 1k counter, I think. I either move that or the Boa. Boa is obviously the better choice because it has no counter power. And then we go 6k into either the Law. I think Law is probably the best option here. Because if he has another one in hand, he can just bounce that one back. Oh, um, there's 2k. Alright, fair. Now remember, Sugar is rested. She still works. Her, her ability will always still be active. A lot of people kind of forget this or don't know about it. And hopefully... Yep, okay, you made the mistake. Cool. I appreciate you for making the mistake. Mm, let's rest the blocker here. Real cute. Thank you. Better be going for sugar. Please go for sugar. Haven't you learned your lesson? Good job, buddy. That is totally okay with me. Alright, fair. Right into the birdcage. Let's go. Alright, so the good thing about this is, considering he clears this sugar, we're able to play down our other sugar to rest the Jinbei. Having two sugars on board at the same time is not beneficial by any means necessary, no matter what. <laughs> Just not the way it works. Sugar's ability is automatically, as soon as a character hits on board, you have to activate the effect. You could say, oh, I forgot at locals. Sure. But if you activate one sugar, you have to activate both sugar. It's not if you may, it it must happen. Let's go ahead and do this first. 
We don't need to extend it with um, Lin Lin here, considering he didn't do damage to us last turn. We could do it with Queen. Get a Beam Sword, which is really good. Hmm. Hard choices, honestly, but we need the Dofi. Let's go 9 to face. He's got 4 cards left, or 5 cards now, but still. Let's try this again. I probably should have attacked 8k first, that's my bad. Right? Yeah, I probably should have attacked 8k first. Oh well, I think one of the best things about this match, he didn't draw into um, Gravity Blade. But your boy sure is eating that clock. It's already 4 minutes to go. That's sure, that's fine. Ooh, we get a spider web here, which is really good. Two down open. He didn't do leader ability. There's the Kaido. I'm guessing he forgot what the top five was, considering he played Perona last turn. Which is fine. Get the 9k in. I do want to keep Birdcage alive on board, but we're going to see if we can get him down to zero here. We have one more queen in hand, so we should be able to get there. Let's go five, actually. This way we're able to use Noro Noro Beam Sword and Spiderweb and have Queen on board. Hey man, I'm sorry man. You're the one playing blue. Got no removal. Feels bad. Let's keep the birdcage up. We get a Doflamingo, or sorry not Dofi, we get a Zoro here. We've got two blockers on board with double events. Here comes the Kaido. No problem, arrest it. Give you the Uta. And this should be, uh, this game should be over. I can restand queens at the end of the turn, if need be. We have a way to do that with Lin Lin. Okay, cool. Good game, buddy. Well played. Oof, man. I hate playing into Marco as, as this leader. I'm not gonna lie, not gonna hold you guys. It sounds like, you know, Birdcage would be pretty good here, but uh being able to get like the Sanji off into like a, a new gate or something, it's just good game at that point, man. We just lose. Too many big bodies. Ragnarok, even if I wanted to up the copies or ratios here, it only helps me out into like Rayleigh. So being able to stack new gates or Sanji's on board to really just beat you up. But there's the birdcage. We're gonna try it. We have Zoro Zoro in hand as well. So, I mean, that's good at least. As long as he doesn't have Red Rock. So, we have the late game potential, potentially. Ooh. Wave Crash and Vista. Did not expect that. 5k here. Yep. Let's drop Cage. Already at 2 life. Marco is active, though, if he wants to play the, the blocker down. Okay, so there's an ace. We have the beam sword to rest it. Which is pretty good. Just unfortunately, if we decide to do it, we lose out on the dawn. You know what I mean? Because then the next turn we play queen down as well, which would hurt us. We'd be at five dawn. One minus for the queen and one minus for the Nora Nora beam sword. So we'd be at five this turn if we decided to do that. Let's go seven. Yep. I was smart though. I was hoping he would take the bait and just rest with the ace and give me a, a 2k. But this way we got 3k counter out of hand instead. You may be arguing why I didn't play queen down. I don't necessarily need queen right now. We are at 4 life. I'm okay with taking a couple hits. Oof. Newgate, man. Glad I didn't play him down right away because he would just popped it with Newgate. It's pretty spooky. Very strong card, I think. I think this list will also get better with the new stuff going into the structure decks. So I, I do have my eye on Shanks from the film. Whereas, if we gain access to Shanks, boys, we can pop every character on board. We have no problem dealing with late game. We actually can compete in late game with Shanks. 
Because once they attack into us, we drop a Shanks, we clear the late game pieces, we have Birdcage to lock down everything else. Lin Lin is going to allow us to heal up to sustain ourselves. That's at least what I'm thinking. But who's to say? We haven't got, I haven't really played around with the structure decks in Birdcage yet. So that is another list I'm going to be cooking up here that's going to be coming to the channel. So do stay tuned for that one. I think Shanks is going to be pretty good here in this deck. Alright, 7 lead. That's his first hit, which is okay. Alright, I mean, yeah, sure, bud. You got it. Goodness. Another sugar. Not something I want to see. Hmm. So Vista is locked. Which really doesn't help me too much. I think we have to try to go for the new gate here. I don't think we can clear it, but we're gonna try. Dang, man. That firefish really caught me off guard. Or crossfire. I was not expecting that for them to pop the Linlin -lin right away. So that does suck. He's going into his 9 Dawn turn here. So I expect the worst. Yep, here we go. Well, that crossfire actually might let this man win the game here. Pretty solid. So we don't have a way to remove the new gate on board, or any of his other bodies, because Lin Lin is dead. So I feel like we're kind of playing on the back foot. So we stalled out for one, one attack here with the beam sword. How do we survive this, though? Because now we're at 10. I think Birdcage going here, even though we don't have a way to sustain it, is probably alright. I don't know if Zoro is going to let me win this game, though. It really depends on what we get from Trigger here. I think we need some 2k counters, honestly. Let's go 5. Cool. We have one spider web. If both of these are 2Ks, we might be able to do it, maybe. Considering he's using dot on characters and cards here, we might be able to survive if we get some 2Ks off this. Yeah, yeah, I think we can survive, actually. Misplays from Marco were made, I think. We'll see. So Rayleigh is hitting in at 9k, Newgate at 9k, and then Marco at 7. So he has three 9k swings and one 7k swing potentially. Or not, alright. This works out. Let's go ahead and spiderweb the first one. I think we have to block this, but we'll see. Because Newgate's an 8k as well, right? So, we have to counter this one and take the Sanji one. Boys, were we chilling all along? Were we fine? I think we were fine, right? Yeah, we're fine, we're fine. Oh, yeah, now we're fine. Now we're good. I mean, I guess even without the Ace, even without the Ragnarok here, I think we're okay. Right? Because we just popped the ace. We still have three swings with Zoro and one swing with Leader. So he blocks one with ace, and then the other ones from Zoro get through. Perhaps. I think we can go nine here without having to extend the Dawn, but we can use a little bit here on Leader to swing for seven first. And then go nine, nine, nine with Zoro. Okay. I think that's game. I don't think anything in hand could get him out of this scenario. Yeah. Yeah, we're chilling. Let's go, boys. Zoro actually put in work. Who'd have thought? Against a Marco, mind you. He survived in this matchup. Isn't that crazy? Good game, buddy. Super close game.
this will be the last game of the day. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This was a lot of fun. Rather long video as usual, you know. I did have to try to give you guys my best explanation of how I play this list in, in the opening. Which, a lot of decks, I typically have a longer intro because I'm, I'm a little bit passionate about certain decks I enjoy, you know what I mean? But, eats the road. I try not to make it too long. But this video itself is probably going to be like an hour or so. So like you guys are normally used to. Yeah, not, not too bad, not too bad. But Birdcage Do Flamingo, it's here. It's back in OP08. It's pretty strong with the meta changing. No more RP Law. Rob Lucci got nerfed and comes to stage. You see it here first. Once these new structure decks come out and we gain access to Shanks, I'm trying to tell you, Film Dofi might be a thing again. He could be strong. It could be fun. Film Dofi with Birdcage. You never know. But in any case, let's dive back into this game. I don't want. I don't want to guys. I don't want to like give you guys too much spoilers because I have a lot of lists I want to try out with um, Doflamingo. So, OP08 structure decks. I'm here for it. Let's go ahead and get down this bond clay here, just so we can ramp up earlier and have our Lulin ready to go. If he doesn't have the answer for it, it is what it is. Structure deck buggy, top three, yep, sure. We don't have a birdcage yet, which does suck in this matchup. I need birdcage, I think, to be able to win this, because I cannot survive the onslaught of attacks otherwise. Hey, let's go, boys. 7k here. There's another law. Sure, why not? Thanks, appreciate you. I mean, we got the ramp off. Thank you. Allow me the ramp again. Why not? We'll give you the 2k counter in the uh, Bond Clay. Alright. I don't really know how much he's going to do. But. Get down Birdcage first. Play down to Sugar. Keep Sugar on board. I decided not to go 8k just because we can keep up the 2 Dawn floating for the Beam Sword. And or if we get a trigger here. Having Sugar on board is also really, really good, considering the fact that if he wants to play a character on board first, we can just rest it with Sugar, and then he can attack into it with Dofi. I'm okay with that. If he chooses to, whatever he plays on board off leader ability will get rested anyway with Birdcage, so. Playing Weevil just to draw a card to get it to lock down, um, that's a little weird. Especially when you could have played Buggy to trigger sugar first unless the weevil drew into the buggy but that seems a little counterintuitive to me seven lead there's the boa we lock that down as well go ahead organize how you want man birdcage is so strong here in this matchup oh it became an ak i like that that's a little interesting I'm swinging for seven boa allows you to attach a dawn automatically to your leader that's already in combat. It's kind of crazy. That's a little weird of a... Like, the way that works, right? A little strange. That's like, I attack you for 7k. No, sorry. Just kidding. 8. I meant 8, right? That's weird. Let's put this on bottom. Just to get this out of here. This way he can't really attach to Dawn. Or he can't attack into it with Sugar without attacking with Leader here. We have another Linlin and Queen for next turn to extend Birdcage indefinitely, so we're chilling. As long as I'm able to do this at least once per turn, Birdcage isn't really going to go away. And I like to think that with all of our matchups today, we've had Birdcage out indefinitely through the whole game. I don't think a single time we popped it. Or maybe we did once, right? I think we did once against the Carrot. Maybe? But still, absolutely crazy. Mm. We could put this on life, but there's not really a point, honestly. All these cards are locked down, they can't really do anything. They're no threat to me right now. Okay. Bounce your sugar back. It's the boa. That's fine. We can play down sugar again to rest the blocker. There's a 
Moria. What does he get back from trash? 2k counter crocodile. Alright. Hmm. I guess we have to beam sword here. Gives me the 2k. We'll rest this. And then we have to give you another 1k counter. He knows that we have the sugar in hands. I'd rather get rid of the Uther though. Truthfully. Or the queen. Okay, baby five. Let's get this done. Rest this. That's a given. I can search out with baby five here into Dofi if I need to. Doesn't hurt me too much doing that. Let's go 9k lead here. This will float over two dawn at the end of the turn with spider web. Let's go 9k lead again. 5k counter is needed. Man's holding that pudding forever, isn't he? That's crazy. Hey, I'll take those. There goes the birdcage. In hindsight, I could have went 8k. Right? And then dropped the queen to keep the cage on board. We could have done that. And that would have been okay too. But I think at least this way, we just remove all characters on board. Which is great. Just fine. If I did it the other way around, we might not have gotten that many cards out of his hand there as well. By going 8 versus the 10. Or sorry, versus the 9. Okay. We'll rest the Perona, I guess. Can't really do anything else about it. What does he do after this? He can't play Kaido down if he has one. Mihawk could be a thing for the to remove the Uta. But I think that hurts him here as well. I think he needs to have bodies that are blockers. Kicks that. Sure. That card is so good. Yep. Crocodile draws two. I think we're safe to take this hit. Realistically. If not, we spider web and drop the baby five. Yeah, the spider web and drop the baby five. Got another one. That's fine. I don't think we can win here. As much as I would like to go um, seven on a sugar and uh, do some damage to Dofi, it's probably not the smart idea. So, can I get some events, Queen. I cannot. No, oh, I forgot about the Douglas bullet. Douglas bullet here. I dropped the uh, the kid for this one. Let's go do this. You get two done back from Spiderweb. In hindsight, I probably should have just went six K here and then left two Don up and they got two more Don with the leader ability in case we get a trigger here that is an event. I think that would have been the better play. Yes, less cards in hand, but potentially two events that we can utilize. Because this time around he has three attacks, so we only have one blocker on board. That can be restood. But if we did potentially get a spiderweb off life, Queen could block twice. No, he can't. Never mind. There goes a gravity blade. I lied. That's one, two. We have to guard out some of these. We can't take all these attacks. He's got six cards in hand. That's fine. Because Dofi's hitting me for 8, so we give him the 2k counter and spiderweb out of this one. Or take this hit. 7, leaving one Dawn up. Weird. Oh, for the leader ability. Duh. Let's do this. So he has Kaido next. That means another no, no counter card. Which is great. I don't remember if that's his second Kaido. Or that's the first one. Because I swear we saw Kaido earlier when he did his ability. Do we just go for it? 
because we can go 12 and 12 here. Eight, nine. Yeah, 12, 12. This might have been a big risk. And I think we could have probably played it safe. And cleared board there instead. Does he have it? Nice, let's go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to the end of the video. In which today we played around with Birdcage Doflamingo, in which has been a long time that we actually got to utilize this guy. The last time we played with him was in OP07, in which now in OP08, he, get, he has gained access to a bunch of new cards, being Charlotte Linlin, and of course, Noranora Beamsword from EB01, and then other cards in which we've always already had access to, such as Ragnarok and Bonclay, but now I'm utilizing them here in a list in which I don't think a lot of people have been expecting and or ready for. I think the Bond Clay allows you to ramp up into the, the Big Mom and or the Zoro if you have it, the Hody Jones if you're playing with that as well, earlier than your opponent's expecting, and then you're able to tone it down a little bit with the Lin Lin, with the Queen, with either the Uta or the Law. I think the deck really works out, and so far I'm having a lot of fun with this. I have a, a bunch of other iterations I want to showcase to you guys later when we gain access to the structure decks. And we're going to be talking about film. Once these decks come out, I think Shanks will be really, really good here. Instead of the Zoro play or what have you, this allows us to just to kill anything on board, which is really, really nice. That's rested, man. So you're able to pop the big moms, the 10 drop aces. You're able to just go ham with Shanks. I think this card is going to be really strong here for this list. Because now, without Sakazuki in the format anymore, Film Doflamingo has the potential of actually doing something or coming back. And again, Shanks is film. So, Film Doflamingo was really strong in the beforehand, died out when Sakazuki became meta. So, I'm, I, who, who is to say that it can't come back in some capacity and do well? You got Film Uta here, which is another really, really good card, allowing you to give Rested Dawn up to one of your characters or leaders, which is really strong because it allows you to give things like your Diamante, Give him that rested dawn. Therefore, he's able to restand himself at the end of the turn. See? See? Pretty good. But we'll dive into some more lists later on when we get closer into these structure decks. Or I might even just dabble in it beforehand. But overall, I had a lot of fun with this list. I do hope you guys enjoy it. Try it, try it out, man. Let me know your thoughts and your opinions on it down in the comments below. As we normally do here on the channel, Birdcage Zofamingo. Flamingo. Hopefully can make a splash in the metagame. Or maybe I'm just Copium. It is what it is. Favorite leader of all time. Let's go. I'll catch you guys in the very next video. Stay safe out there. Good luck in your pre-release events. Hope you guys pull something shiny. I'm looking for pudding. But hey, good luck to everybody else. I'll see y'all later.